Hi, and you're watching another episode of Under the Radar. I am Abstract Jazz, and we're here today with Kyle Henley. What it is? I'm with only, I'm with only, I'm with only words, verbs. So, Kyle, tell us, where are you from? Yeah. Uh, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually, I was born in Detroit, but my mother from Baltimore. My yeah. people split, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I moved here as a baby, I was a little dude. Yeah. You know, like four or five years old, I moved to Baltimore. So. What part of Baltimore? Uh, all over, actually. My family all over Baltimore. But raised more primarily out the county, for uh, Randallstown, Woodlawn area. Uh, but my father lived over east, off Greenmount. That's where I live now. Uh, I've been over Greenmount for like 10 years now. So, I mean, you know. I'm on west side, east side, baby. I'm, I'm on both sides for real. So when did you get into hip hop? I mean, that's a weird question. When did you get into hip hop? <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Like, hip hop is music, man. Everybody, like, it's a part of our culture, you feel me? Like, who didn't listen to hip hop? You know, I listened to whatever my, my OGs, my big homies was listening to. So, you know, that's... Everybody listen to hip hop, right? <laughs> so let's talk about your music and career. What made you decide to take on this career as a rapper? Um, <clears throat> music, uh, on a serious note, is like is really important. Um, tool I feel like to just get out messages and share your story and shit like that. And I, I, I just felt like you know um, I was talented at it. I was in a group uh, called Thank. Um, Still for dreams that never kill. Uh, shout out to Case on the show. Um, we broke up or whatever. That shit was over. So I, I felt like, okay, I could. What I'm gonna do? You know what I mean? And I was a young, I was a young dude when I was started rapping. Like I was, I was already putting out mixtapes when I was like 18, 19. Like, like you know, my mixtapes was jumping in the county when I was like 18, 19. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, so now it's like for me, it's like, all right. We got to turn this into a business. This is money now, like, you know. And I felt like I ain't trying to go work for nobody. You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, look, like somebody had to make this microphone. Somebody made this hat. Somebody made the wire that going to this microphone. And he's sitting around rich as fuck right now because he decided to say, fuck y'all, I'm about to go make some shit on my own. You feel me? So it's like... What, like, you know, music is just the first phase of my, you know, situation. I got a lot more plans than music. But music is going to be like my vessel, you see what I'm saying, to do what I got to do. So, straight up. <laughs> yeah. So, what is music for robots? Music for robots uh, was started in like 2008, 2009 with the dudes that I was talking about earlier, with the group I was in. Um, and so when we split, uh, like, they decided to keep the name, I decided to keep the label, you see what I'm saying? And so, you know, that just pretty much turned into, you know, me rebuilding my, my brand. And, um, you know, I started working with, uh, I'm sorry, I started working with, uh, like, a lot more, like, diverse people, reaching out to people. And, uh, and through that process, man, I, I ended up meeting some of my closest friends and like building some serious like working professional relationships you know shout out to my brother tone tracks who uh helped executive produce my project young black and handsome with me you know he's a he's a creative genius um shout out my homie t money uh shout out to sheila d shout out to contradiction you know we kind of built like a a, a a house to make music you know this is where we at right now this is the hq you feel me this is headquarters so we in here you feel me? but um music for robots is pretty much uh music like uh the whole process and the mentality behind it was like uh the world's becoming like more and more like systematic niggas is becoming more and more trained like we were just laughing right because we both got rips in our jeans and i said it's the style these days and we both started laughing but it's like you know when something go it's kind of like the trickle down effect you see what i'm saying like with money with everything so it's like it just spread you know what i mean but is, is that really our way is that is that human nature or is that the way we've been trained to be you see what I'm saying? So my music, I feel like, challenges that that notion. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I rap, I turn up, you know, I smoke weed, I do this, I do that. But I'm, I'm not your average nigga. I'm not dumb. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not out here trying to rob and stick up somebody's grandmother. Eventually, we're going to get to a point where our, uh, our label is putting out a certain type of um, vibe. 
where it's like positive peace you know what i'm saying like trying to break you free of this this uh robotic nature that they got american because a lot of us sleep for real a lot of people sleep they're not they're not awake yeah. right you see what i'm saying yeah it's like music for the people really you know and you know people download shit whatever like we just becoming more and more like dependent on technology so it's kind of like you know, you got to go to work, you got to hustle, and pretty much your day becomes repetitive. Right. Right. You become robotic. Really, you just a, you know, a slave. I, I don't say music for the slaves, but it's like, nigga, like, we, everybody has to work, everybody got to grind, and, you know, the stress that that creates, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's interesting. Maybe I'm a little too high right now to formulate what I'm trying to say. It, but you feel me, though. Feel as long as you feel what I'm trying yeah, to say, that that's all that really matters, you feel me? All right, cool. So I know young, black, and handsome is like, well, I, I noticed that it's filled with like a lot, like a mixture of a lot of the old school jams and the 2000s. So um, what is your inspiration behind that? Um, well, yeah. Okay. When I was trying to make young, black, and handsome, I was trying to make a masterpiece, honestly. I still feel like it's, you know, it's dope, but I feel like it didn't. I could have did a little, a couple things. That's just the perfectionist in me, for real, you know. But I had to get something out, so I got it out. Um, but the, my, mind, my mind frame was like, I have so much music that I wanted to make sure that people understood that my from my first project what my core sound is. Like, you know, so when people go back and check out my catalog, they'll be like, yo, this is where he started, you know. I wanted to show people the type of music that made me want to do music. And, you know, for instance, like, the first album I ever bought with my own money, I won't, I'm not afraid to admit this, is uh, Jay-Z's The Blueprint. Mm -hmm. So when I went back to think like, damn, like, you know, my first album, and on top of that, Reasonable Doubt, I'm Ready to Die, these are like, like, favorite albums of mine. Like, you know, I grew up as a kid listening to these albums. So like, for me, it was like, I had to start that way. Like, it was no other way I could start with sampling and like, because that's real hip hop. Like, that's what, I, when I thought about a first album, I thought about those guys. And then I was like, I gotta make something in that lane. I know that's weird, but it was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit was cool. So hopefully, you know, people will, uh, it'll snowball and people will gravitate to it eventually. I don't think it's gotten the reception that it deserves yet, but I feel like once more people get exposed to it, yeah, people are gonna understand like how much work I put into that shit. So we'll see. Mm. And I heard Stoner Love too. I heard you guys are working on a video for that. So yeah. what's up with that? Stoner Love is 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 on the way. Shout out to Contradiction. That's my bro ham. Um, shout out to KB and the Love Culture the videographer that's gonna be shooting the video. Um, yeah, Stoner Love was an awesome record. Like when Contra was working on this project, he came to me and was like, "Yo, I need you to do this hook." And we collaborated on another song on his project called Kites that I really fuck with too. That shit is dope. But um, he was like, yo, this song's trash. So I'm like, all right. So we in his car. He plays shit. I'm like, and I just really want to get high. I was like, yo, this shit is crazy. I'm like, nigga, I need, I need to own that. I need, I need in, you feel me? I need a part of that. So, um, yeah. And I felt, I told him, I was like, yo, that's a hit. You know, so we right, right now, we just working on making sure we get the right video shot to it. Because right now, that's all it's about. You know, so shout out to Concha. So you're working on any other projects that you want to tell us about? I'm working on a lot of projects Anyone that I wanna, don't want to tell y'all about. <laughs> just want, want us to wait and see. All right, that's cool. We'll 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 take that one. We'll come back. We'll come back with that one. <laughs> I mean, not Hollywood like that, but right, it's so sensitive. Yeah. It's like an atom bomb. It's like nuclear. Right. So it's like Area 51. Okay. Mm. Well, in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime. <laughs> Check out, check out his mixtape, Young, Black, and Handsome. Yeah. Thank you, Kyle, for your time. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Way by the broke, my niggas. We ain't going back. Back. What are some of your inspirations? Some of my inspirations. Hmm. Um, my family. Um. My team. Turn on music and get life from it. And how did you get started? Uh, basically, my dad had a lot of rappers around um, where I used to live at. 
on um, Carly Street. Um, 